What's blue and not very heavy? Light blue. Today, I'm going to recap a 2013 comedy crime film called Suck Me Shakespeare. In a German correctional facility, Zeki, a former bank thief, gains freedom after serving a year behind bars. He treks into the city, grabs several beers, then reunites with his old pal Zeynep. To his surprise, she's altered his vintage car in ways he doesn't approve. Zeki inquires about the million euros he'd lifted prior to his incarceration. Zenit mentions she's securely hidden it and then leads him to a school, handing him a device marking the cash's whereabouts. To his dismay, a gym now stands atop the stash location. Later, Zeki visits the nightclub where Zenep works. The club's boss confronts him, aggressively reminding Zeki of his 2,000 euros debt. Promising repayment, Zeki secures temporary lodging from the boss, albeit it's in the club's display section, requiring him to maintain discretion. That evening, he learns of a janitorial opening at the school and plots to take advantage of it for full building access. Come dawn, Zeki drives to the school, heedlessly knocking over several bikes. He attempts to access the gym, but it's locked. He then encounters Lissy, a teacher bearing a prank kick me sign. Led by Lissy, Zeki arrives at the principal's office, noting sharply dressed janitorial applicants and witnesses a teacher, Miss Knorr, distressed by her mischievous students. Principal Durster is unsympathetic. Devising a plan, Zeki triggers the fire alarm, sending everyone into a frenzy. He informs Durster a pupil was behind the commotion. As she rectifies the situation, Zeki intimidates a potential tattletale student with aggression. Mistakenly, Jurster assumes Zeki's there for a teaching role, not janitorial duties. Initially resistant, Zeki agrees upon learning of the gym key access and a 2,000 euros pay. His new challenge is fabricating credentials by the next day. As he departs, a young boy obstructs him, but Zeki forcefully removes the hindrance. Concurrently, Lizzie strives to connect with her sibling Laura, facing rejection, and her gentleness renders her ineffective in school discipline. However, Zeki intervenes, asserting authority by extinguishing a student's cigarette against his skin, instilling fear in onlookers. Lissy feels she owes Zeki, so he suggests discussing the curriculum together. They subsequently gather at Lizzie's residence, undergoing a somewhat strained chat. Lizzie offers tea, but Zeki prefers something stronger. While she's searching her refrigerator, he spikes her drink with a sedative. Upon her return and taking a sip, she dozes off. Zeki starts scoring the home for Lissy's educational documents, attempting to replicate them. The printer proves uncooperative, prompting him to transfer the documents to a USB drive. Suddenly, Lissy's flatmate, Kuro, appears, prompting quick thinking from Zeki. He relocates Lizzie to her bed, removes his top, and feigns being asleep beside her. When Caro sneaks a glance into the room, she presumes they're romantically involved and retreats. Exiting shortly after, Zeki advises Caro that Lissy overindulged in drinks. Come morning, Zeki dons eyeglasses to appear more intellectual but packs his bag with beer for the day ahead. He spots Lizzie but dismisses her, leaving her feeling slighted. After swiping a student's snack, he joins the teachers and encounters Nor. Overwhelmed by the students, she makes a dramatic exit. Misinterpreting a spilled juice accident, students believe it's blood and swarm her for photos. The mishap wasn't fatal and emergency services soon arrive. An urgent staff conference ensues, led by Principal Gerster, addressing the challenges posed by the notorious 10B class. As Zeki discreetly mixes alcohol into his beverage, Lizzie offers constructive solutions. Consequently, Jurster reassigns Lizzie to the problematic 10B class while Zeki inherits Lizzie's former class. Lizzie's introduction to 10B is less than welcoming. The classroom's in chaos and the students are indifferent to her, regardless of her tone. An array of pranks ensues, a glue-like substance on chalk, a malfunctioning faucet drenching her, a tar-coated towel, and a foul surprise on the doorknob. Distressed, she appeals to Durster for support or shared responsibility, but is met with an ultimatum, leading to her distress. In contrast, Zeki finds Lizzie's former class excessively well-behaved. Rather than instructing them, he mandates a daily film presentation from the students. The top movie selector is promised elevated grades. 
He habitually confiscates their meals and leisurely peruses a magazine during class hours. During the night, Zeki assembles various instruments and employs his newly acquired teacher's keys to access the school gym. There, he initiates excavation efforts for his concealed loot. He also sets up a proximity sensor to alert him of any approaching individuals. Concurrently, Caro rectifies the malfunctioning printer, which spews out Lizzie's academic transcripts. Upon examining the digital records, it becomes evident that Zeki accessed them during Lizzie's unconscious state. Concerned and skeptical, Lizzie heads to the school and discerns in the principal's office that Zeki submitted her credentials under a different name. When Zeki's sensor notifies him of someone's presence, he ventures out, encountering Lizzie as she attempts to depart. She confronts him about pilfering her academic qualifications and hints at legal action. Zeki proposes a compensation, but Lizzie solely desires the return of her former class. Come daylight, they implore Durster to reverse their class assignments. After persistent pleading, she consents. On Zeki's maiden entry into Class 10B, he discovers lewd graphics on the chalkboard. Reaching into a cupboard, he's startled by mousetraps clasping his fingers and a viscous dark liquid splattering him. Amidst student laughter, Zeki commences attendance, but the students jestingly respond collectively, regardless of the name he calls. When he attempts to rise, he finds himself adhered to the chair by potent adhesive and has to rip his trousers for freedom. Exhausted, he approaches his vehicle only to be ambushed by a feathery booby trap. The spectacle, captured on security footage, amuses Durster, who summons Zeki, gaining an unobstructed view of his exposed rear. That evening, Zeki intensifies his digging, utilizing more robust equipment. Opting to change at higher within the premises, he heads straight to lessons by dawn. He observed several absentee students, but is equipped with a paintball weapon. Swiftly, he targets and marks the truant students, displaying impeccable aim even as they scramble over fences. Once gathered in the room, Zeki clarifies that he merely desires silence during his class session, irrespective of their academic pursuits. Shortly after, Lizzie stops by to procure some chalk and observes a distraught student. Conveying her concern to Zeki, he nonchalantly instructs the student to weep quietly. That evening, as Zeki persists with his underground search, the bar proprietor contacts him, evicting him from the establishment. As he loads his belongings into his vehicle, he inadvertently shatters a window. To compound his misfortune, rainfall begins, rendering his car an unsuitable shelter for the night. Shortly thereafter, Lizzie and Caro are alerted by unfamiliar sounds emanating from the garden. Arming themselves with makeshift weapons, they venture out to confront the intruder. Much to their surprise, they discover that it's Zeki. Lizzie agrees to shelter him under the condition that he commits to genuine teaching, supplying him with educational materials to aid his instruction. Caro also suggests gaining the allegiance of the dominant students, as their acceptance would sway the rest. In preparation, Zeki delves into the backgrounds of his students and learns that many dabble in minor criminal activities. During a subsequent swimming lesson, as the students disregard Lizzie, Zeki intervenes, abruptly thrusting a student into the water. This display of assertiveness compels the others to participate. When a scuffle erupts between two boys, Zeki intervenes, but a stray kick injures him. In retaliation, he subdues the aggressor by holding him underwater until he shows remorse. Post-lesson, Lizzie reaches out to the boy's parent, fearing legal repercussions. However, the parent endorses their rigorous approach. For their midday meal, Zeki introduces Lizzie to Zainab's nightclub. He finds Lizzie's unease amidst the dancers quite entertaining. It becomes apparent that the dominant figures in his class aspire to delve into the worlds of drug trade and exotic dancing, hence their academic disinterest. That evening, a former accomplice tempts Zeki with an illicit endeavor, which he declines. While excavating the gym, Zeki stumbles upon a time capsule containing relics from past students, including a younger Lizzie. Among the contents is a heartfelt letter detailing Lizzie's aspirations to teach, evoking emotions in Zeki. In a state of inebriation, he examines the school's trophy case, unleashing his frustration at the lack of guidance he received during his youth, resulting in his damaged trajectory. 
His night culminates in a drunken stupor on his desk, providing mischievous students the opportunity to give him a comical makeover. As he parades with the cosmetic alterations, Lizzie alone extends empathy, assisting him when he feels unwell and showing compassion upon seeing a further prank on his posterior. Upon his return home, he finds Laura in distress, grappling with insecurities stemming from perceived unattractiveness and social alienation. In an attempt to boost her morale, he escorts her to Zainab, who provides a transformative makeover. Subsequently, he accompanies Laura to a student gathering, where her revamped appearance garners admiration. Later, Zeki organizes a field trip for his students to a drug dealer's residence, highlighting the grim reality of such a lifestyle. He further showcases the bleak existence of the local working girls, emphasizing the lack of allure in such choices. After observing the realities of criminal life, the students resolve to pursue alternative careers. Zeki suggests they engage in the drama club. Back at school, he commends a female student for her exceptional academic performance, suggesting she could advance a grade. He attributes her stagnation to her conduct and recommends she align with the science enthusiasts. When she observes a skirmish, her past experiences enable her to shield the academically inclined students from the antagonism of their popular peers. In gratitude, they invite her into their science club. Later, a significant portion of Class 10B tries out for a Romeo and Juliet rendition, demonstrating commendable skill. However, Zenki critiques the play's archaic language and monotony. Amidst his vocal disapproval, the overseen drama instructor resigns, thrusting the directorial responsibility upon him. Together, Zeki and the students modernize and rejuvenate the play's narrative. As the narrative unfolds, Zeki's dual commitment to his covert gym excavation and growing affection for Lizzie becomes evident. Concurrently, his burgeoning fondness for his students becomes palpable as they reciprocate his genuine interest in their well-being. One day, a public online release of teacher evaluations by students leaves Lizzie, disheartened by her omission. Zeki consoles her, elucidating the importance of cultivating a cool persona. In a bid to bolster her image, Zeki orchestrates a graffiti session at a train station, wherein Lizzie's unexpected artistic prowess leaves the students in awe. However, their creative endeavor is curtailed by a police intervention. The subsequent day witnesses a noticeable shift in student demeanor towards Lissy, validating her pedagogical skills and even earning Kirster's admiration. The subsequent educational excursion transports the students to a farm. Amidst their playful exploration of agricultural equipment, a misdirected prank involving a hormone injection gun results in Lizzie being inadvertently administered a dose. Zeki is tasked with managing a hyperactive Lissy, whose behavior influenced by the injection, becomes increasingly erratic. This incident alarms Laura, as Child Protective Services' impending visit threatens their living arrangement. It is revealed that the sisters have been reliant on each other since the demise of their parents, and Lizzie's current state might jeopardize Laura's guardianship. Suddenly, Lizzie falls unconscious, a consequence of the hormone injection. Upon regaining consciousness, she finds herself amidst a ruse orchestrated by Zeki and Laura to convince a child services official of their familial stability. Zeki, amplifying the deception, acts as Lizzie's devoted boyfriend, even sealing it with a kiss. Their interaction, punctuated by a delightful meal and Zeki's culinary prowess, convinces the official of the household's suitability for Laura's continued residency. Later that night, Zeki stumbles upon the money he had ardently sought, experiencing an initial elation that quickly dissipates into melancholy upon realizing that wealth alone doesn't guarantee happiness. He then clears his debts with the club owner and Zenip, candidly expressing his newfound preference for a teacher's lifestyle. The much-anticipated play performance looms. Laura, despite her behind-the-scenes role, harbors aspirations of portraying Juliet and covets a romantic scene with the Romeo actor, having even committed Juliet's lines to memory. To fulfill her wishes, Zeki discreetly incapacitates the lead actress, enabling Laura to assume the Juliet role. The revamped play, imbued with contemporary dialogues and settings, is a resounding success, eliciting laughter and accolades from the audience, ultimately securing the second position in the contest.
Subsequently, Zeki showcases the innovative creations of the Science Club to Gerster. She's profoundly impressed, proposing a permanent teaching role for Zeki. An incident during a gym class, where a student's high jump culminates in her being ensnared in Zeki's concealed tunnel, exposes his secret excavation. Lizzie, rescuing the student, ventures into the tunnel, encountering Zeki in the midst of a revealing phone conversation with Zenip about his clandestine activities. Overhearing this, Lizzie feels betrayed, confronting Zeki and demanding his resignation lest she involve law enforcement. Though Zeki's attempts to convey his transformed self falter, he acquiesces to her ultimatum. Later, amidst the familiar ambience of the club, Zeki is poignantly reminded of his bond with his students through a signed pencil case. The subsequent day unveils a turn of events. Lizzie learns that the students, in a display of solidarity, have taken the fall for the tunnel to Bakel, presenting it to Gerster as a harmless prank. Today is the crucial exam for Class 10B. As they prepare, the students gaze at assorted photographs they've brought with them. Lizzie, perplexed by the act, learns from the students that it was Zeki's suggestion to carry an image of what they cherish most to bolster their motivation. Curiously, Lizzie finds an image of herself, the one from the time capsule, in Zeki's drawer. Suddenly, Zainab enters, bearing a letter from Zeki for Lizzie. In it, he expresses remorse for betraying her confidence, revealing that he's embarking on a fresh life chapter and leaving her funds for gym repairs. Zainab informs Lizzie that Zeki, unable to secure legitimate employment due to fraudulent documents, is now contemplating a bank high street. As Nora communicates her decision not to return to Gerster, Lizzie's attempt to reach Zeki is in vain. She then enlists the aid of the Science Club, hoping to utilize their innovative project to establish contact since their devices are stowed in Zeki's vehicle. Yet, as Lizzie successfully connects with Zeki, his criminal accomplice damages the device. In a fortuitous twist, some students stumble upon Zeki and seek his guidance, evoking a realization in him about his significance in their lives. Emotionally moved, especially when the students affectionately grasp his hand, Zeki renounces his criminal intentions. Later, at home, Zeki hands Lizzie a mysterious box, leading her to presume it contains illicit goods. As she dashes off, the box inadvertently opens, revealing a dress accompanied by a flower. Zeki extends an invitation to Lizzie to be his date for the prom. Moved, Lizzie accepts, and they share a tender moment. Upon reaching school, Durster beckons them, announcing the stellar results of Class 10B. She ardently wishes for Zeki to remain on staff. Zeki, in a bid for honesty, admits to his lack of genuine qualifications. Nonetheless, an eager Durster fabricates a diploma for Zeki to ensure he stays on wary of handling another challenging batch in the future. The story culminates with the blossoming couple joining the prom festivities, marking the inception of their renewed lives together. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy to hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. It would be best if you watched the whole movie. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this.